You co-authored a paper titled Photon Rings Around Warped Black Holes. First of all, whoever writes your paper titles, <laughs> you like uh, the soft hair and the and, and the, the term black hole and the Big Bang, you're very good at coming up with titles yourself. Anyway, you co-authored a paper titled Photon Rings Around Warped Black Holes. In it, you write, quote, recent work has identified a number of emergent symmetries related to the intricate self-similar structure of the photon ring. So what are photon rings? What are some interesting characteristics of a photon ring? Um, so that was a paper with uh, Dan Kapitz and Alex Lipsaska that just came out. And this is, uh, paper is kind of a wonderful example of what happens when you start to talk to people who are, you know, way out of your comfort zone of no different stuff and look at the world a different way. And and um, some two or three years ago, um, I'm I'm part of this uh, the Black Hole Initiative. I'm also part of this Event Horizon Telescope collaboration that took the famous, uh, though I had nothing to do with the experiment, but. Uh, uh, that that took the famous picture of the, of the mm-hmm. donut of of M eighty seven, and um, through conversations with them, which started out in an effort to understand the image that they'd seen. So it's a great thing for somebody like me, a theoretical physicist, lost, seemingly lost in Stringland to be p- presented with an picture. actual picture of a black hole <laughs> and ask and to be what? asked <laughs> to be asked what can we learn from this yeah. so you know with some help uh from uh, you know Michael Johnson and Alex Lopsaska um and a bunch of other people at the Venture Horizon collaboration we came up with a fantastic beautiful answer using Einstein's theory, that um, is both shaping the future of, now it is shaping the future of improved black hole photographs. What do you want to concentrate on in the photograph? You know, you just point it at the sky and click? No, you don't do that. You you optimize for various features. And um, it's, it's both shaping that and in the process of talking to them and thinking about how light behaves around a black hole, it, they, black holes just have so many magic tricks and they do so many weird things. And the photon ring is among the weirdest of them. We understood the this photon ring and in the process of this, we said, hey, this photon ring has got to be telling us something about the puzzle of where the holographic plate is um, outside of an ordinary astrophysical black hole. And we nailed it for the stringy black holes, but they have a somewhat different character. What's a stringy black hole? The, the black holes that describe us, the string The theory. black holes that are contained in string theory yes, and, okay. and they have different structure in them. Sure. Well, but actually, can we step back? So what was the light in the image taken in 2019? Okay. Oh, no, not taken in 2019, um, uh, presented in 2019. So here's the puzzle. Um, what they really saw, uh, so the black holes tend to gather stuff that swirls around it. Yeah. And they don't know what that stuff is made of. They don't know what its temperature is. They don't know what kind of magnetic fields there are around there. So the form of the image has a lot of unknowns in it that it's dependent on many other things other than the geometry of the black hole. So most of what you're learning is about the stuff. Now, the stuff... The swirling stuff, the hot swirling stuff, is interesting as hell, but it's not as interesting as the black hole, which are the which are the most, in my view, the most interesting things in the universe. 
So you don't want to just learn about the stuff. You want to learn about the black hole that, that is swirling around. So one of the, at the very first step, at the fir- very primitive level, this is just a big leap for human civilization to be able to see a black hole and the way you can see it is because there's stuff around it. Yeah. But you don't get to learn much about the black hole. You get to learn more about the stuff just from the image. Yeah. Okay. But you're not going to learn about the details before right. you've even seen it. Because there's, there's too many parameters, there's too many variables that govern the stuff. Yeah. So then we found a very wonderful way to learn about the black hole. And here's how it works. A black hole is a mirror. And the way it's a mirror is if light, a photon, bounces off your face towards the black hole, and it goes straight to the black hole, just falls in, you never see it again. Mm -hmm. But if it just misses the black hole, it'll swing around the back and come back to you. And you see yourself from the photon that went around the back of the black hole. But not only can that happen, the black hole, the photon can swing around twice and come back. So you actually see an infinite number of copies of yourself. Like with a little bit of a delay. With a little bit of a delay, right. This is awesome. Yeah. And (laughs) in fact... I mean, we're not used to an object that bends light like that, right? Yeah. So you're going to get some trippy cool yeah. effects. And and in fact, one of my my students has made a really awesome computer animation of this, which I'm going to show at a public lecture in a, in a couple of weeks where the audience will see infinitely many copies of themselves That's awesome. <laughs> swirling around the black hole. So <laughs> so if you so it's a black hole is like a hall of mirrors. You know, like a department store where you go and there's the, th- <laughs> there's the three mirrors and you see infinitely many copies of yourself? Yeah. So think of the black hole as the mirror. You know, and you know, you go in there with your clothes. If you want to know about your clothes, you just look at the direct image. You're not learning anything about the configuration of mirrors. But the relation of, of um, the image you see in front of you to the one you see at the side and the next one and then so on depends only on the mirrors. It doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing. Mm-hmm. So you can go there a thousand times wearing different clothes, but each time there will be the same relation between the subsequent images. And that is how we're going to learn about the black holes. We're going to take the stuff that is swirling around and we're going to tease out the subsequent images and look at their relation. And there's some very beautiful, really beautiful mathematics, which we were surprised to realize with the volumes and volumes of papers on black holes and their properties, this particular, because it was a physical question that had never been asked in exactly this way. So basically you're looking at the, the relation between fo- the subsequent images. The relation, but those are ultimately formed by photons that are swirling around. The photons that are orbiting. So orbiting. the photon ring are the photons that orbit around. And beyond. So like orbit and lose orbit. Like they, are they? Yeah. Like, so, uh, uh, wow. And that starts to give you, what can you possibly figure out mathematically about the black hole? Can you, the geometry of it? The, the, the spin geometry, of it? the spin. Um, and you can verify things behaving, you know, we have never seen a region of space-time with such high curvature. I mean, the region around a black hole is crazy. It's not like in this room. Right. The curvature is everything, you know? You spent probably enough time with the math and the photons. Can you put yourself in that space? So we're like having a conversation in pretty peaceful, comfortable, flat space. Are you able to put yourself in, in, in the place around a black hole? Yeah, I'm able to imagine that kind of thing, yeah. So for example, and actually there's a wonderful movie, um, Interstellar. Yeah. And um, in that movie, you know, Kip Thorne, of, of course, is a great 
theoretical physicist, experimental, who later won the Nobel Prize um, for LIGO. And that movie is very accurate, scientifically. And there's some funny statements in there that of the, you know, 100 million people who saw that movie, there can't be more than 10 or 20 understood mm -hmm. about why Matthew McConaughey is ejecting the trash in a certain direction in order to... <laughs> <laughs> and, but, the, you know, for example, if I were a spinning black hole right here, if I were spinning fast enough, you wouldn't be able to stay still there. You'd be have to be orbiting around like that, you know? You'd have to have your microphone on a... <laughs> yeah, but I wonder what the experience is, what the actual experience, because, I mean, space itself is curved. Well, if space gets very curved, you get crushed. You know, now, your body gets ripped apart because the forces are different on different parts of the Sure. Body. Okay, so that would be... But if, it, be... but if it can be less curved so that the curvature is very noticeable, mm -hmm. but you're not ripped apart. The fact that this was just nonchalantly stated is 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 just beautiful. Like two biological systems discussing uh, which level of curvature is required to rip apart said biological system. Very well. Um, so you propose in the paper that a photon ring of a warped black hole is indeed part of the black hole hologram. A photon ring of a warped black hole is indeed part of the black hole hologram. <sighs> Uh, so what can you intuit about the hologram and the, the holographic plate from looking at the photon rings? Well, this paper is exploring a new idea. It's not make it's not it, it's it's not making a new discovery, so to speak. It's exploring an idea and 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 um, the ins and outs of it and 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 what might work and and what might not. And this photon ring, somehow everybody always thought that the holographic plate sat at the horizon of the black hole. Right. And that the quantum system that describes the black hole is inside the horizon. And it, in fact, um we think it's plausible and we give some evidence in some soluble examples, in this case in an example in one lower dimension where we can handle the equations better, that the quantum system that describes the black hole should correspond to a region of space-time which is, includes the photon ring. So it's bigger. Mm -hmm. So that that would be the holographic plate. So that would the, be the holographic plate. All of that. I mean, okay. we didn't yeah. prove this. We 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 uh, you know we put it out there. It hadn't really been considered previously. We put it out there, and um, it does seem more plausible than the idea that it sits literally at the horizon, and it is a big, outstanding problem of of how you have a holographic reconstruction of black holes like M87. Do you think uh, there could be experimental, further experimental data that helps explore some of these ideas that you have for photon rings and ho holographic plates through imaging and through so, like higher and higher resolution images and also just more and more data? I about wish so, but I don't think so. And, but what I think already has happened and will continue to happen is that the, you know, there, there are many different ways that uh, theorists and observers can interact. The gold standard is the theorist makes a prediction, the observer measures it and confirms it, or the observer uh, makes a discovery and the theorist explains it. Um, but there's a lot less than that, which is really kind of the bread and butter of, you know, those are dramatic moments when that happens, right? Those are once in a lifetime moments when that happens. But the bread and butter is more when it has already happened, 
they came to us and said, what, what is the interesting theoretical things we can understand in this swirl around the black hole? And we gave an answer, and then that in turn jogged us to think about the holographic principle in the context of M87 a little bit differently. And so it's a useful, and in the same vein, it's useful to talk to the philosophers and it's useful to talk to the uh, mathematicians and, you know, a lot of, uh, you gotta, we just gotta, you know, we don't know where we're going. We just gotta like do everything.